What's up guys? So today we have pulled out our retro Intel system and we're going to be giving it a bit of an upgrade. Aside from its problem with load times because of the hard drive that we use in this system, we also have another problem and that is the cooling. We don't have any case fans in this and if you remember the video, we didn't install anything because we wanted to do it over time and show you how to do some things. But we've also got an issue with the cooling of the CPU. Now, the CPU cooler that we've currently got on it is an Intel stock cooler that I actually found in a box somewhere. So I don't even know if it was powerful enough to cool the i7 processor we're using. But instead, what we're going to be doing is we're going to actually skip a few things out and we're going to go straight up to one of these. Now this is the Master Liquid ML240R RGB from Cooler Master. It is an AIO that if you, again, are a follower of the channel, you will realize that I took this out of my main system when I replaced it with a Fractal. It didn't really get that much use in that system, so I thought it's perfect to stick with the theme of this build and add it to that. So that's what we're gonna to do today. So let's get it done. Okay, so before we start any installation, let's take a look at what an AIO is. Now, technically, AIO stands for all-in-one, and that means an all-in-one water cooling system. The system itself will comprise of a radiator, pipes that will obviously travel the water from the radiator to the block, and then there are different types of designs that you can get for blocks. Now, this one in particular uses the AS Tech design, which means that the pump is actually inside the block itself. Now, you can get others like the Fractal one I fit before where the pump is in the radiator. I don't think it really makes that much difference in terms of performance, but sometimes it can have an effect on noise. But particularly when they do put it in the radiator, you can get much smaller blocks. And as you can see, this one's quite a big block, but it's not too big and it actually looks pretty fine in the system. The pumps are generally powered by a fan header on your motherboard. So you usually get something like a four or three pin connector. And this one also has an ARGB connector for the lighting, which actually shines up in the pump itself. Obviously, to cool your radiator, you need fans. And this one came with two 120 millimeter radiator fans. Now, radiator fans are slightly different to case fans, but now more than ever, they're actually producing what they call a bit of a hybrid fan, and it can work either as a case fan or a radiator fan. Uh, what you're looking for really is static pressure so that it can actually get the air through the radiator and through to the other side. And that will transfer all the heat from the radiator out of the system, hopefully, if you've got the fans with the right way around but that's effectively what it all is. Now to install these, it's very similar to any kind of air cooler. The block itself will mount to the motherboard using some kind of fixings, and depending on which board you've got, they've actually provided pretty much everything. These kits at the moment, or particularly when I bought this, they don't support up to the Intel 1700 socket, but pretty much everything else they will do, and I'm sure that Cooler Master have a method for you to be able to get an adapter or something like that. For an AMD system, clearly, a lot of them other boards come with those little hooks on the boards and you will need these two things and that's all you'll actually need you basically will just screw these to the block following the instructions that they provide and they will just hook down and screw as you would do with any amd cooler for intel it is a little bit different and obviously we are going to an intel board for this you will get different types of brackets which are these ones which will simply screw to the actual block just like the amd ones but then you'll also have to build one of these. Now this is a backing plate which actually adjusts forward and backwards so that you can get it to fit different types of Intel boards. And you simply build them by taking these very long threaded screws, popping them through the back, and then you get these little clips that will slide on, click onto the threaded block, and then you can move them and adjust them to where you need them to go for your socket. Now to show you this process a little bit easier, I've actually taken the motherboard out of the case and removed the cooler that was existingly here. I would advise to do this and I generally do this whenever I fit a new cooler such as this because you can fit them inside the cases but I want to make sure that I've got equal pressure over everything and I just find it much easier to do outside the case. Now that I've actually fit the brackets to the block itself I tend to fit the fans next. To do this you need to understand where your radiator is actually going to be mounted in your case and for this I'm going to be doing it in the top of the case with the pipes coming from the front all the way around to the actual pump itself. And the fans will need to have their wiring facing backwards. So it's best to fit them the way that need be. 
To fit the fans, we simply line it up to the radiator, just like that, and then we will get some extra long screws, just like this, that can go all the way through. Now you can fit the fans the other way around, so they're, they're, they're between the radiator and the case. I don't generally like to do that. I like them to push through the radiator, but lots of people have a different preference where they like it to pull through the radiator, and you can do that with the same screws. These screws actually come with a cross fitting in the top, and you can actually thread another screw, which are these ones. Generally, these actually hold the radiators in and you can screw them straight through. Now it will leave a gap between the fans and the case itself. So you need to compensate for that extra distance to make sure you've got the clearances you need if you're gonna do it that way. But to fit the fans, you simply line it up, start putting the screws in, and then just give them a little bit of a tweak, just like that. Now that we've got the radiator built, it's time to actually install our block onto our motherboard. Now to do this, we obviously need to make sure it's the right way around for the way that we want it. And we need to slip that back bracket into and underneath the board, just like that. So we've got the pegs now sticking up. Again, another reason why I like to do this outside is because now you can actually place your motherboard down and those pegs aren't gonna disappear. Sometimes if you're doing it in a case, there's actually a gap in the back of your case for things like cable management and that screw will actually disappear. So you have to put something under it, but we don't need to do that because that's what we've got. Now, I have test fit this before into the case and what we will need to do is actually with the fans going that way round, we will need to have the pipes on as you're looking at the machine, the left-hand side of the CPU socket. Now, a lot of coolers don't actually allow you to do much in terms of changing the logo, but for the Cooler Master, you can simply pop it out and turn it round to wherever you want. As with any CPU cooler, don't forget to use your thermal paste. These generally come with a little sachet of it and it works perfectly fine, but I tend to use MX4 from Arctic. Some AIOs will actually come with a pad on the bottom, so you won't have it separate and you can get away with just using what's there. But I've had to obviously add this separate because I've took this out of another unit before. To fit the brackets, we simply want to align it over the top of those screws that we had. Now we'll need to move these pipes a little bit so we can get in there. Just like that. And then we have these extra cross screws that will just simply mount down on top. And we can then use a screwdriver to give them extra tension. But again, we don't want to go too tight. They will bottom out, but you can damage your board if you go too tight. What we're looking for is really a nice even compression between the block and the CPU itself. Simply using a screwdriver, we can tweak this down until we're happy with the pressures all round. Now that we have the block installed, obviously we'll need our cabling. One is gonna go routing out to the back of the case to some kind of RGB controller. And of course we don't have one on this board because it's a bit of an old board now, it's a retro board. But the other one we're actually going to plug onto the CPU fan header. Now, if you don't have enough fan headers on your motherboard to control the fans for the radiator and you want them to be able to go up and down with the temperature of the system and the pump another way that they actually have explained in some of the instructions that i've seen with these is that you can plug this uh, three pin connection straight to your power supply which will give 100 percent of power to the pump it means the pump will be going at 100 percent all the time but that's fine uh, some of them don't actually adjust anyway um, but that's an option if you need it we're just going to fit it straight to the header and we're good to go now that we have it all on and the radiators all fitted, ready to go, we're now gonna go and fit it into the system. Okay, so now that we've actually got the motherboard reinstalled into the motherboard, we need to install the radiator. This is the extra piece that you'll do over an AIO than you would do with a normal air cooler. And they're not always the easiest because you need to make sure that they're in the right place. I want to actually install it in the top of this. I'm not sure if that's the right place for now, but we'll see how it goes. And if not, next time you see the machine, it may be in a different place, but we'll do that for now. So all we need to do is make sure that our cabling actually feeds through to the back. As you can see, that's why I put the fans that way round. And we need to remove the grill from the top. To install it into the roof, we're just gonna flip the machine on its side and then start to move the radiator into position, making sure those wires come out. And what we should see is that our screws will start to align with the roof. There's extra roof holes at the back here, here and here that we want them to line up to. 
and then we've got some extra screws that will go straight into the radiator so we'll put them in and mount it up and we'll make sure the pipes are not too tight anywhere although they do feel a little bit tight in this system already so now that we've got the radiator installed at the top we've got all the screws in we can put the vented or the anti-dust filter back into the top and we can see that these pipes are actually pretty tight um, but they'll work they're actually all the way around i don't want them to touch the graphics card when that's in there so i'll readjust them when the graphics card's in there but apart from that it's actually all fit quite well all we need to do now is actually do a little bit more wiring up to help us do that obviously we now have two fans at the top and we only have one front header which is where we're going to run it from and we're going to use one of these uh, four pin pwm splitters they'll go from that header through the back of the system and we can plug all those fans in so we'll get that installed and we'll get the system up and running and make sure everything works fine so the machine is back together now and it is actually working perfectly fine everything runs as it should all the fans are working and the coolers working but we are missing a simple piece and that is the rgb coloring and cooler master has you covered for that too if we look at the back now because we've got two argb fans we've got two cables for that and we also have the argb three three pin connection for the block itself uh, Cooler Master do provide in this kit one of these. This is an ARGB controller that allows you to set lots of different lighting. There's actually loads of different plugs you can get for these and you can drive them from USB, which I assume will give you some kind of uh, software version. I tend to run them on other systems through the motherboard themselves because a lot of motherboards now have ARGB connections. This one clearly doesn't because of how old it is. But to set this up, all we need to do is simply flip the machine onto its front magnetic this to somewhere in the system and i'm going to be putting it here we need a spare sata cable to actually power the unit itself which we will connect from down there and we'll do some cable tidying later and then all we do is simply connect all of these three pin connections into some of the headers on the block now that we've got that ARGB controller installed and all hooked up, we can see that we've brought a bit of light to this system. The AIO is lighting up in what is a default rainbow effect, as well as the fans up there. And we'll do some kind of overlay to show you how that looks. It's a very simple system to install, although you do need to plan it a little bit for the case that you've got. Now this one fits perfectly fine at the top where it is at the moment, but I'm not happy with the way that these cables are stretched all the way across things. They're not very flexible in the way that you work with these ones, although some of the systems out there are. I know the Fractal ones in particular are very good. They're very flexible and they pretty much reach anywhere. I think what I might do on this system is actually move the radiator to the front, but I don't want it to affect where the actual fan placement will come on that because we're going to be doing a fan upgrade to this soon. So make sure you subscribe to the channel if you want to see that. We're also going to be taking this system on a bit of an adventure for an upgrade in terms of speed. And for that, we're going to be swapping that old hard drive out for an SSD. And we're going to actually do a bit of a uh, benchmark to see how much quicker we can get the system to boot and load in games. If you've got any questions about how to install these things, or if you're getting stuck, make sure you drop them in the comments below. Or feel free to join our Discord server where we've got lots of helpful builders out there, which will help give you advice. But I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I'll catch you in the next one.